Picts, Scots, Romans, Vikings and more. What major events happened in Scotland between 1 and 1000 AD? The land of red squirrels, deer and highland cows. By the end of this video, you'll be a master of Scottish history. The initial period of a Scottish timeline was dominated by the Romans. In 79 AD, Julius Agricola began the formal Roman invasion of Northern Britannia, known mainly as Caledonia, or Scotland today, although Roman legions had been venturing north in previous years. The Romans inflicted a major defeat on the Caledonians at the Battle of Mongropius in around 83 or 84 AD. In 122, the Romans started construction on Hadrian's Wall in Northern England, which was completed around 127. Around 15 years later, Rome began construction on the northernmost frontier of her empire, Antonine's Wall, which stretched between the Firth of Forth and the River Clyde in the central belt of modern Scotland. Over the decades, however, there was constant back and forth between the native people of ancient Scotland and the Romans. One instance occurred in 196, when a confederation of tribes known as the Mate, which probably occupied a region centred on Stirlingshire, overran Hadrian's Wall and forced the Romans to retreat south. Just over a decade later, the Roman Emperor Septimius Severus rebuilt Hadrian's Wall and invaded Caledonia once again. A few years into this campaign, Severus gave a genocidal order to his son, Caracalla, in an attempt to exterminate the Mate and the Caledoni. Severus declared that we are not going to leave a single one of them alive, down to the babies in their mother's wombs. The whole people must be wiped out of existence. The Romans depopulated large parts of Scotland in a brutal fashion as a result of this order, but they ultimately proved unsuccessful, in part because Severus died during the campaign, with Caracalla returning to Rome shortly afterward. In 258, some sources suggest that a significant number of Scots, or Gaels, settled in western Scotland under the leader, Rude. The Kingdom of Dalriada would be founded in this region centuries later. In 297, a Roman writer records that the Picts and Irish, meaning the Scots, attacked Hadrian's Wall. There was constant raids by the Picts and Scots and responses by the Romans over the centuries of Roman presence in Caledonia. In the middle of the 4th century, St Ninian was born, who went on to be an early Christian missionary amongst the Picts. Around 410, Roman rule formally ended in Britain, although Roman troops had gradually been withdrawn for decades prior to this. In around 498, the Gaelic Kingdom of Dalriada is thought to have been founded, which encompassed the western seaborne of Scotland, centred on Argyll, and parts of County Antrim in the north of Ireland. In the middle of the 6th century, some sources suggest that Lothian came under control of the Angles. In 563, St Columba founded a monastery on the Hebridean island of Iona, and a few years later, he travelled on a Christian mission to Pickland. In 575, Scottish Dalriada appeared to gain independence from Irish Dalriada. Also during the 6th century, the Kingdom of Strathclyde arose, also known as the Old Clue, with its capital being Dumbarton. In 580, Aidan Mac Gabrain, the King of Dalriada, during its Golden Age, is recorded as fighting in Orkney. In 600, the Gododan people, descendants of the Votadini, who occupied the region of the Hena Glaive or Old North, which corresponded to parts of southern Scotland and northern England, were defeated at the Battle of Cat Wraith in North Yorkshire by the Angles. Three years later, in 603, Aidan Mac Gabrain, the King of Dalriada, is defeated by King Ethelrith of Bernicia, the northern Northumbrian kingdom, at the Battle of Degsistan. In 638, 
the Northumbrians captured Edinburgh from the Gododden. In 657, Oswig, King of Northumberland, became overlord of the Scots and other parts of Britain. After victory at the Battle of Wynwade two years earlier over the Kingdom of Mercia. Then in 685, the Picts, under their king, Brady III, won a decisive victory at the Battle of Dunnectain over the King of Northumbria, Egrith, a major blow to Northumbrian northern expansion. In 736, the King of the Picts, Angus, ravaged and burned the capital of Dalriada, Dunad. Also in the middle of the 8th century, Angus established a monastery in St Andrews. In the 790s, Viking raids began. In 796, the Vikings attacked Iona and pillaged and killed many monks on the island. This became a theme in subsequent years. In 806, a notable Viking raid on Iona resulted in the massacre of around 70 monks. Many monks went on to relocate to the Abbey of Kells in Ireland. In 843, the Picts and the Scots were unified into the Kingdom of Alapa, the embryo of the modern nation of Scotland, by Kenneth MacAlpin. This started the Royal House of Alpin, which reigned until 1034, when the House of Dunkeld took the throne under Duncan I. In 870, Viking leaders launched a successful siege of Dumbarton Rock, the capital of the Kingdom of Strathclyde. In 875, Orkney became a Norse earldom. Fifteen years later, Orkney, Shetland, parts of the Hebridean Islands, and Caithness became part of Harald Fairhair's Kingdom of Norway. In around 903, St Andrews became the religious capital of Alapa. In 918, the Battle of Corbridge took place in Northumberland between the Norse Gael leader Ragnall Imar and an alliance of the Kingdom of Alapa and the Kingdom of Northumbria. Although the battle was somewhat indecisive, the Scots managed to retreat north, whilst Ragnall went on to further establish his position in Northumbria in the following years. Then in 937, Ethelstan, the King of England, won victory at the Battle of Brunanburg over an alliance of Olaf Guthrithson, King of Dublin, Constantine II, King of Scotland, and Owen, King of Strathclyde. In 997, Constantine III dies after a brief reign as the King of Alapa. He is succeeded by Kenneth III. Did I leave anything out in this video that you would have included? What mistakes did I make? Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you would like to support this work through Patreon, buymeacoffee.com or make a donation through PayPal, please do so via the links in the description below. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell and I'll speak to you soon.